In a movie, the audience only spends about two hours with the characters. But in a TV show, the audience can spend dozens or even hundreds of hours with the characters, sometimes over years. That's longer than a lot of the audience's real-life relationships. For the audience to invest that kind of time, you need to have great characters. But how do you create great characters for a TV show? Hi, I'm Micah Craddy. I'm a WGA screenwriter and the head of writing at ARC Studio. This is the second lesson in our How to Write a Great TV Pilot course. In our first lesson, we covered developing a great idea for a TV show. In this lesson, we're going to look at characters, both creating characters that the audience is going to want to invest in, but also creating characters that are going to help you generate stories for your show moving forward. Because the thing about TV shows is that in success, they keep going, so you need a lot of stories, and your characters can help you with that. If you haven't yet, please like this video, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on our future lessons. And check out the link in the description for a worksheet template that will help you develop your characters. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later in the video. Now, come join me as we climb this mountain of learning together, brought to you by Arc Studio Screenwriting and your imagination. You don't need to make your characters likable but you do need to write them so that the audience likes watching them. Obviously, different audiences find different things compelling, so I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do with your characters. Instead, I want to share with you some principles that you can then adapt to your specific show. The first things your characters should do is something. That is, they should be actively doing things. Even in Seinfeld, which is famously a show about nothing, the characters are still constantly doing things. They're hatching schemes, pursuing relationships, sabotaging those relationships, or just trying to get a Twix bar out of a vending machine. <laughs> Watching characters do things are how we get to know them because characters are defined by their actions. What they do and how they do it tells us who they are, and the more we get to know them, the more invested we get in them and start to build a relationship. If your characters are just passively observing the world and not acting on it, eventually the audience is going to lose interest. One tip I have for you to keep your characters active is to punish them for being passive. That is, if they're not going to do something, have the world in your show do something to them. Let me show you what I mean with an overly elaborate metaphor. Let's say your character in your show is driving down the road in their car and they come to a four-way intersection at a stop sign and stop. Now they can turn left, they can turn right, they can go straight, but they need to do something. They can't just sit there idling in their car, because that's boring. Make them make a decision, and if they don't make a decision, if they just sit there, then have the world do something to them. Like, maybe a car drives up behind and rear-ends them. But what kinds of things should your characters do? Things they care about. It doesn't have to be saving the world, it could be something silly, it just has to be something that they're invested in. There's an episode of Friends where they're just throwing a ball back and forth and playing catch to see how long they can go without dropping it. It's silly, but it's compelling because they get really into it. And if your characters care about what they're doing, your audience is also more likely to care and get invested. So think about your show. What do your characters care about? Are they doing things related to that? One way to think about what your characters care about is to think about what they want, and they should want something. The thing in their life that they want or are trying to achieve is called their external goal. If they have an external goal, they have something that is driving them. It forces them to be active and make the kind of decisions that will tell us who they are. It also helps to keep them active if there are consequences if they fail to achieve their goal. That's called the stakes, and we talked more about that in the first lesson. The stakes are what they stand to gain if they achieve their goal, and what they have to lose if they fail to achieve their goal. If there are stakes, they can't give up, because that means they lose something important. Even if you're writing a slacker character who's perfectly content with the way things are, that character still wants something. What do they want? Well, they want things to stay the same. So with that character, you change the world around them and force them to adapt. Can they adapt? What do they do next? To take it a step deeper, there should be a reason why they want their external goal. What's their underlying motivation? This is called their internal goal. The external goal is the thing in the world that they really want, but the internal goal is the emotional or psychological thing inside them that they really need. It's sometimes called their hole in the soul, the missing thing inside of themselves that they need in order to feel complete. 
The internal goal of your protagonist is probably the most important single element in your entire show. It's the thing your audience is going to care the most about and identify with the most. The heart of your show is your protagonist reckoning with their internal goal. Maybe they achieve their goal by the end of the show, maybe they grow beyond it, or maybe they completely fail. In TV, while the external goal may only last for a single season and then the next season there's a new external goal, the internal goal will probably last for the entire show. Let me give you an example. Let's say your protagonist wants to win the state high school football championship. That's the external goal for the first season. But why do they want to win the championship? That's their internal goal. Maybe it's so they can finally win the love and respect of their father. So the external goal is to win the championship. The internal goal is to win the love and respect of their father. And then the journey of the entire show is them reckoning with that internal goal. Maybe eventually they realize that they shouldn't have to win the love and respect of their father and they come to love and respect themselves. That's the show. So how do you, as the writer, use what I'm talking about in your pilot script? Well, first, figure out what your character wants, what their external goal is, and make sure that's clear to the audience in the pilot. That's the what. Then you figure out the why. Why do they want this? That's their internal goal. The character's internal goal doesn't have to be explicitly stated. No one has to say, character, this is why you want this. The character might not even know themselves that they want it, but the audience should be able to feel it. If we use the earlier example of the football player, we could show his internal goal in the pilot by having him score the winning touchdown in a game early in the season. He's the hero, and everyone's happy except for him because his dad wasn't there. So he's disappointed. And then, as the audience, we see, oh, what he really cares about is his dad's opinion of him. One other thing. Once you have the character's external and internal goals in the pilot, make sure you start them on their journey towards those goals in the pilot. A way you can do this is by making sure your inciting incident, the thing that starts your story, isn't at the end of your pilot. Move it up early in your pilot so that the story can actually get started, we can actually see your character on this journey, actively making the kinds of decisions that are going to define them for us. Your characters aren't just participants in the stories on your TV show. Your characters actively create the stories on your TV show as it moves forward. Your characters create stories by facing obstacles when they're trying to achieve their goals. Obstacles creates conflicts, and conflicts create stories. These obstacles that your character faces can come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, but it's a lot easier if you don't have to try to keep thinking of new ones as you go. Instead, think of one big, fundamental obstacle that's present from the start of your show and lasts the whole time. In other words, try to create a fundamental disconnect between what your characters want and the reality of the world they're living in. You can see countless examples of this in TV shows. In Abbott Elementary, Janine is a teacher who wants to do everything she can to make sure her students learn. But this is really hard because her school lacks resources and she lacks experience. In The Bear, Carmi wants to be a great boss with a great restaurant. But that's really hard because the restaurant is falling apart and he's saddled with emotional and psychological baggage that he can't deal with. In both these examples, there are fundamental conflicts between what the characters want and the reality of their world. You'll notice that these disconnects can both be external, like the school being underfunded or the restaurant falling apart, or internal, like a lack of experience and emotional trauma. These fundamental problems create something that we talked about in the previous lesson, chronic or unresolvable conflicts. The kind of conflicts that don't just get solved once and are done. They're conflicts that keep creating new problems. And if they keep creating new problems, that means they keep generating new stories for new episodes. Another way to look at this is through character flaws. Yeah, character flaws can make your characters more human and relatable, but more importantly, in TV, they can act as story engines. We talked about story engines last lesson, but as a reminder, story engines are the elements of your show that keep generating new stories. So how do character flaws act as story engines? 
Well, your character's flaws create conflicts for them. And as we know, conflicts create stories. A fantastic example of this is Larry David in Curb Your Enthusiasm. In almost every episode, the story is generated by Larry saying or doing something that he shouldn't. He just can't restrain himself, and he doesn't want to restrain himself. He's got a medical condition. If he could, each episode would be boring and last about four minutes. But the thing about character flaws is that they're useless unless you put your character in situations where those flaws are being triggered. For example, if your character is really impatient, you need to put them in situations where their patience is constantly being tested. So think about the main characters in your pilot. Have you created a fundamental disconnect between what they want and the reality of their world? Or think about their flaws. Have you put them in a world where their specific flaws will be triggered over and over again across multiple episodes? It's not just your main characters who create stories. Your other characters should be helping to create stories as well. Chief among these is the antagonist. Now, not every show has a main antagonist, and some shows will have multiple antagonists over the various seasons. What makes someone an antagonist is just that their goals are in opposition to your main character's goals. They want something that's in opposition to what your main character wants. They both can't get what they want. Something has to give. I hope your conflict spidey sense is tingling, because if your show is about what your main character wants, and there's someone who's getting in the way of what they want, that's going to create conflict, and of course, conflict is going to create stories. One thing that's really important to keep in mind about antagonists is they're not necessarily villains. They're not necessarily evil. What makes them an antagonist is just that they want something that's in opposition to the main character. For instance, if your protagonist is a teenager who wants to go to a party, their antagonists could be their parents who say they can't go to the party. This doesn't make the parents evil, it just means their goals of keeping their kids safe are different, are in opposition to the protagonist's goals of wanting to have fun. You'll notice that both the teenager and their parents think that they're in the right, and that's fantastic because everyone is the hero in their own story. You can also have antagonists who literally antagonize your protagonists. Whatever your protagonist's thing is, whatever buttons they have, you can have antagonists who push those buttons over and over again. This is particularly true in comedies. Hello, Newman. <laughs> But not all characters are protagonists or antagonists. You can also have your protagonists, friends, spouses, kids, bosses, coworkers, whatever. How can these people help generate stories? Well, the answer is in the name. They're supporting characters, not minor characters, supporting characters. Those characters are there to support your story. Don't just think of them as comedic relief or sidekicks. They should have an impact on your main character's journey towards their goal. Maybe they're the motivation for the protagonist's goal, maybe they're helping them achieve the goal, or maybe they're causing problems along the way and are stumbling blocks on the way to the goal. Whatever it is, they're having an impact by helping to put your main character in the kinds of situations where they make decisions related to their goal. Also, make sure your supporting characters want something themselves. Remember what I said earlier, everyone is the hero in their own story. The supporting characters think they're the main character. They don't know that they're just there on the side, so give them something that they want. When it comes to supporting characters, a helpful thought exercise is to think about what would happen if you removed that character from your show. Would anything change? If nothing changes, you need to think more about that character. And a tip could be if you have two or three supporting characters who really aren't feeling that developed or having much of an impact, try combining them into one character and see if that can help. I've put together a character development worksheet to help you do some of these things. You can find a link to it in the description below. It uses ArcStudio's really awesome built-in notes app features. You can download the worksheet to your ArcStudio account as a notes template, and then use it for all your characters across all your scripts. In ArcStudio, you can develop your characters and keep track of them by using the elements feature. You create a character element for each of your characters, you can write their bio there, and each element has a note. And that's where you can use the character development worksheet template that I'm providing you with so that you can develop that character further. When you outline your story, you'll be able to tag and color code the story beats with the characters in those beats. All right, that's it for this lesson. Make sure to come back and check out our next lesson on the story structure in your pilot script. Until then, be kind to yourself and happy writing.